Hey guys, welcome to the webinar today. I want to share with you some of the biggest mistakes that school owners make and they fail when opening a school, but I'm going to share with you step by step how to easily open a barber styling school. Uh, but as you just see, when I walked into school, I cut the lights on, I cut the alarm off, and I have a checklist that I'm going to give you if you stay to the end, and it's going to show you every single detailed step that you must do in opening the school. Also, I want to share with you a 36 page completed fill in the blank business plan for a barber and styling school. Now, one of the first things that you need to do is contact your state board so you can see the rules and regulations. Then also make sure that you have the proper uh, license of barber or cosmetology instructor. You also are going to need a school license and make sure that you have a business license and when the state board comes to inspect their school they're going to give you an inspection list to approve your school also one of the most important things and everybody loves this how to become accredited so you can receive financial aid and grants now i'm going to walk you around the school i opened the school back in 1998 which is a very long time ago and i started with zero students today i have one of the largest barber schools in the country so let's walk around the school as i share some things with y'all now it doesn't take a lot of money to open a school in the state of tennessee you need 15 chairs 15 stations uh, five shampoo bowls three hair dryers and two manicure stations now i'm also going to share later on in the webinar where you can get your equipment for pennies on the dollar so stay with me as we continue to walk around the school let's go back here to the shampoo area like i said earlier you need 15 barber chairs and stations three hair dryers that's required by our state also you need five shampoo bowls now the five shampoo bowls is a requirement and last but not least you also need two manicure stations and we're going to get down to business so i can share some of the secrets and shortcuts to opening a profitable barber style in school so let's travel back here in the classroom as i share some things oh yeah one thing another way that uh you can generate income for your school when you first open a vending machine make sure you go to sam's or costco where you can get your snacks wholesale and then you can sell them retail. Now let's go in the classroom. Hey guys, welcome to the webinar and we're gonna go through some quick tips on starting and running a profitable barber styling school. Now I'm gonna share the first thing that you must do. First thing, contact your state board. Now why should you contact your state board? because every state has different rules and regulations. For example, in the state of Tennessee, you need 15 barber chairs and stations, three hair dryers, five shampoo bowls, two manicure stations, one classroom, one office, and two restrooms. So that's the first thing that you wanna do. Now, after you contact your state board, you're gonna have many documents, and I have all of those documents uh, in the class. So when you go online for the online class, I'm going to share all of the documents and they're downloadable and fill in the blank. Now, what we're looking at right here, this is a completed school catalog and it has every document that you need. So uh, guys, make sure that you stay to the end because I'm going to give you a lot of free documents. Now, when starting the school, I have this checklist of everything they need. GED, high school diploma, picture ID, and a copy of their social security card. So all of these documents are going to be uh, in the course. Also, we have the pre-enrollment survey. Now guys, these are fill in the blank in a Word document. So all you have to do is copy, cut, and paste. And they're NACOS approved. 
meaning when you become accredited these are the documents that you're going to need now take a look at this here guys this one was assembled by uh, Miss Velva she's been in the business over I'd say 40 to 50 years and she knows everything about the school business uh, she's one of my mentors she's trained me all of these documents have been um, reviewed by her she assembled these documents and this is an enrollment agreement and guess what you get it in a word document all you have to do is copy cut and paste also you're gonna need this document here guys there's several documents that you need just for enrolling a student now this document right here it talks about the past fail rates of the school and the students will have to sign at the bottom so that's a enrollment agreement now let's move on because when opening the school look here advertisement very important because it's going to take some time before you can become accredited so yes i have an advertisement form for you i also have a complete cards now where can you get this jack prince now the great thing about jack prince you can get 5,000 postcards front and back full color gloss shiny for just 175 dollars you can't beat that also the business cards you get 5,000 of these business cards front and back full color guess how much only 99 bucks so you can't beat that now moving on next we have let's talk about the build out now the build out when i opened my first school in 1998 i drove all around town looking for a building now Contact your state board for the rules and regulations. They said the school had to be at least 1,600 square feet. So I was looking for the cheapest building that was 1,600 square feet, and I found one. That was in 1998. The rent was only $1,100. So I paid my first and last month's rent. You pay your light bill, your deposit, your water bill, get your phone and your sign put up, and you're in business. Now, how are you going to get students? I went to all the local high schools. I talked with the guidance counselors. I did presentations at the schools. I went to the homeless shelters. I went to halfway houses. So you will be able to get students. I went to other cosmetology schools because when those ladies graduate, some of them want to become barbers. And if you're on a cosmo school, you can do vice versa. Also, how do we get clients to come in? Remember, barber and styling schools, services are what? They're cheap. Yes. If you go in a salon or barbershop, you know those prices are really high. So what customers did we concentrate on? We went to daycare centers for kids. We talked to single parent moms. We also, we sent out postcards by zip code. I was in 37218 and we sent out over 5,000 postcards and we put a little coupon on the postcard, a dollar off. Now when I initially opened the school, guess what we did? We passed out business cards that had free on the back. One free haircut. We passed out over a thousand free haircuts. Now imagine if someone comes into your school and get a free service and you do a great job and you treat them right. What are they going to do? They're going to come back. They're probably going to tip you. And the best advertisement, as you know, is what? No, it's not social media. No, it's not postcards. What is it? You got it. It's word of mouth. Now, and next. Moving on. Next, let's talk about equipment. Where do you get your equipment from? Who has equipment for pennies on the dollars? We know that barber chairs, cosmetology chairs, shampoo stations, the hair dryers, we know all of that equipment is very expensive. Byrite Beauty, and that number is 1-800-477-6655. Now ask for Richard. He may even give you a bigger discount. Now how much did I pay for all of my equipment? Well, guess what? I didn't spend over $6,000 for all of that equipment. For you talking about five shampoo bowls with the shampoo chairs, the three hair dryers, the 15 uh, chairs and stations. So you can't beat that. I've looked all over 
at all different types of places that sell equipment. Nobody can beat Richard at buy right. So make sure you contact Richard for your equipment, books, and materials. A lot of y'all have asked about books and materials. Where can I purchase those textbooks for the students? Well, guess what? Let's look at some of them. The Barber textbook. What's Cengage? My lady. A lot of y'all have heard of that. And if you stay with me to the end of the webinar, I'm going to give you the exact web address and phone number and contacts to all of the things that I'm sharing with you in this webinar. Now, a lot of people, they don't want to share their connections. They don't want to share their network. But me, I'm going to share everything that I know about opening a profitable barber and styling school so you will not fail. Now, let's look at the teaching materials. Well, what about the lesson plans? We all know lesson plans are very difficult to write. I had a lady that said, well, I want to open a cosmetology school, but I don't know how to write a lesson plan. That's okay. Guess what? My ladies has a full lesson plan. Everything done for you. Look, take a look at this. Let me show you. Full lesson plan, everything. You don't have to do anything. It has all the lessons already done for you. You can't beat that. So this is a full lesson plan, guys. They have DVDs, tutorials. I mean, you can't beat that. All the work is done for you. Now, what about where do you buy those mannequins, the, the clippers, all the tools and everything? Mariana Beauty. And I'm going to give you my direct contact if you stay with me to the end. And they have everything in here. I mean, everything. Blow dryers, clippers, guards, curling irons, hot combs, brushes, everything you can imagine. Now, where do you purchase those barber styling nice jackets and smocks? I'm glad you asked. Let me share that with you. I'm gonna share where you get those nice barber jackets. This is the place. Stylist Wear. Stylistwear.com has barber and styling jackets at wholesale prices. And you get the jackets at wholesale prices and you retail them. So the school will make money off of that. Just like your books. You get your books. Wholesale prices. Guess what? Workbooks, everything, wholesale prices, and you retail them. So that generates income for the school. Now, moving on. And we're covering a lot of stuff here, guys. A lot of great stuff. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is something that's very important. How can I run my school if I don't know anything? Well, in the digital course, we have a completed policy and procedure manual that was developed by none other than Belma de Mumbrin. She's been in the business over 40 something years, probably close to 50 years. And this policy and procedure manual, it is over 100 and I'd say maybe 50, 60 pages long. It has every single document that you're gonna need. It has a checklist. It has, let's go through this. A pre-enrollment receipt. It has, let's keep going, there's so much stuff in here. Okay, it has a leave of absence form. It has the emergency plan. It has the, the job titles for instructors and the owners and the directors. Uh, it also has the school checklist, what I talked about when you walk in. Imagine, turn off the alarm, cut the lights off. Um, turn the radio on. I mean, it has everything that you can imagine in here, every single document. And guess what? It's in a Word document. Copy, cut, and paste. Printed it. Now, the great thing about becoming accredited, 
that allows you to receive financial aid, the Pell Grants and the student loans. Now NACUS, that's one of the largest accrediting commissions for barber and cosmetology schools. Now when you apply for your accreditation, you fill out a contract. Yes, then you travel. They have four classes per year and you sit in these classes for two or three days and they do PowerPoint presentations about how to become accredited. Then they give you this thick book and they tell you to go back home and do this 200 and something page institutional self-study. Some school owners know them as the ISS. Now, the ISS, the ISS has been very difficult for school owners to do. But guess what? We go over that step by step through the course and you get a completed, already done for you, ISS so you can use that for your school so you can become accredited. Now, let's take a look at that institutional self-study for the accreditation, the exhibits, I mean, everything in here, and it has the tabs. You have a done for you institutional self-study where it has for copies of the license. I mean, this within itself, consultants charge about nine to 10,000 just to complete this institutional self-study. No school owner is going to give you this or allow you to copy it or whatever, but you get this in the course. Now moving on. Once you become accredited, let's talk about the financial aid. How much money will you get? Well, you will get Pell Grants, and sub and unsub loans, student loans. Now, how does the Pell Grant work? Let me show you how the Pell Grant works. Let's go. Pell Grant. Most barber and cosmetology courses are about 1,500 hours long. So, from zero to 400, in 50 hours. When the student starts, the government will send you one payment for the Pell Grant, which is usually at least $2,800. I'm just giving you a roundabout figures, about $2,800 for the first payment. Now, from zero to 450, 30 days later, 99% of the time, they will send the sub and unsub. And that total is about $4,700. So now you receive a total of $7,500 for that one student from zero to 450 hours. Now, when they cross 451 hours, guess what happens? Four fifty-one to nine hundred hours. They're going to check their attendance and their grade point average. And if it is at least sixty-seven percent, that's the bare minimum that the government requires. Is seventy percent grade point average. So if they have a, let's say here, sixty-seven percent attendance, seventy percent GPA. Guess what happens? They're gonna send another payment. The same thing. They're gonna send this again, $7,500. So that's a total of 15 grand that you've got for that student between zero to 900 hours. That's how the financial aid works. Now we still have some to go. 901 to 1200 hours they're going to send another Pell Grant payment and that's usually about uh, $1,980 for the Pell. Now what is the difference between a Pell Grant and a student loan? Pell Grant is free money that you don't have to pay back. Remember if it says loan like someone's loaning you money or you're loaning me money, I have to pay that money back. 
So the pound grant right now, we've got about 28, 28, well, close to almost $6,000 in pound grant money that uh, the student doesn't have to pay back. So they also will get uh, loans between 1,200 and between 901 and 1,200 hours. And they usually will get about maybe another two to 3,000 in loans between 901 and 1,200 hours. Now, we're up to about 17, 18,000 dollars. Sometimes they can get a little bit more. Now the last leg, 1201 to 1500 hours. Remember, they're gonna check the attendance, 67% at least, grade point average at least 70%. If so, they will make that last payment, another pound payment of about $1,980 in pound. And last but not least, the last loan payment of about anywhere from two to three or four thousand. So basically, um, for that one student, your school can receive about twenty-five to twenty-six thousand dollars in financial aid, and about almost. 10,000 will be in Pell Grant. The Pell Grant, which is the money that you do not have to pay back. Okay, now, you have questions. The Pell Grant is income-based. So if a student comes into your school and they fill out the financial aid, and we have all of that uh, information in the course also, and we get very detailed, well, I mean, we have thousands of free downloadable documents that uh, you'll have once you take the full course and it breaks down the financial aid. But I'm just giving you a summary in this webinar of some of the top questions that school owners, uh, barber students ask, uh, salon owners ask, barbers and cosmetologists that they ask these questions. So I wanted to go over these for you to give you this information. Now, like I said, the Pell Grant is income based, meaning that's based off of your income. So if a student had a low income or no income at all, they would qualify for the full Pell. Now, say they were married and they made X amount of dollars, but they had kids. They may qualify for a full Pell too, because it's income based. Now, what if a student made too much money or their parents made too much money? Well, if a student is 24 years and younger and they don't have any dependents, chances are they're gonna be a dependent student, meaning they're gonna to have to bring in their parents' tax information. So when that happens, a lot of times, those students don't qualify for a lot of Pell. Sometimes they don't qualify for any Pell. Well, guess what? If they don't qualify for any Pell, this is what happens. They get student loans. Now the student loans are at a very low interest rate. Six months after they graduate, they have to start back paying a monthly payment on their student loans. Now, what happens if they don't pay on the student loans? Well, they have to fill out a reference sheet and they have to add two references. And if they don't pay on those, they can garnish their check, take their taxes, turn them into the credit bureau, and in some states, they take their license from them. So I want to share that information with you too. So now, remember, I told you that they could get $25,000 to $26,000 total financial aid, because a lot of the big chain schools here in the states, they charge that amount. Now, question. People always ask, well, my tuition is only, uh, let's say, 15 grand. Well, if your tuition is only 15 grand and they send, let's say, a total of 20 grand, then that means that you're gonna have to give that student a refund check of five grand, okay? 
So that's how that works. Now a lot of schools, uh, when it comes to refunds, you must refund that money very quickly. And we're gonna get into some of those rules and regulations in some of our um, later webinars. But I just wanted to share some of the summaries uh, with y'all of some of the top questions that people ask. Now, as I close, I want you all to click the link also, you can go to www.millionairebarber.com. You can contact us at millionairebarber at gmail.com if you have questions. So click the link at the end, at the bottom of your seat. And once you click that link, I'm going to give you a free checklist. And like I promised, I'm going to give you a completed business plan for barber and cosmetology school. Also, some of you all ask, well, what's the best software to use to run our school? Well, Fame. And I'm gonna put that in the checklist too, so you have their contact. Well, how do you keep up with the time? We use Insperity. I'm gonna give you that contact information where you can purchase your time clock and the students can get time cards and they just swipe them. So I'm gonna give you all of my secrets and shortcuts. Like I said, I've been doing this since 1998 and I will see you all in the course. Have a great day.